We have made a pre-landfall declaration request to FEMA for support, and Kevin has been working with the administrator, and we anticipate positive approval on that. We have 51 counties in Florida currently under a state of emergency. The executive order that I signed over the weekend uh, also orders all disaster debris management sites and landfills to be open 24-7 in the uh, lead-up to Hurricane Milton. We had a lot of debris left from Hurricane Helene on Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, that creates a huge hazard uh, if you have a major hurricane hit in that area uh, this week. So we've marshaled state assets to be able to help with that mission, and uh, we're going to continue to do that until it's uh, safe, uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. So we do have a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, it is currently located 745 miles west, southwest of Tampa. Uh, it has not moved terribly quickly, but that obviously could change going forward. Storm surge watch has been issued for the Florida Gulf Coast from mainland Monroe County northward to the Suwannee River, the Dixie-Levy County line. Uh, 8 to 12 feet peak storm surge is potential for northern Pinellas all the way down to Charlotte, including in Tampa Bay. 5 to 10 feet peak sur uh, storm surge is possible from Yankee Town southward to the Pasco Pinellas County line and from Englewood southward to Bonita Beach, including Charlotte Harbor. Hurricane watches have been issued for portions of West Central Florida and Florida's Nature Coast. Tropical storm watches extend further south and north through southwest Florida and the Keys uh, and along portions of the Florida Panhandle. Vision of Emergency Management is busy facilitating hundreds of resource requests from communities as we prepare for the impacts. Uh, we've already set, uh, sent major truckloads of food and water to Central Florida in preparation for points of distribution sites after the storm. We're also coordinating the deployment of more than 2,000 feet of flood protection systems uh, and prioritizing critical infrastructure like hospitals, wastewater treatment facilities, and electrical infrastructure. We've deployed a flood barrier around a water pumping station in Bradenton, a fire station in Hillsborough, and more en route uh, to the, the courthouse in Charlotte County, hospital in Kissimmee, master pump station in St. Pete, and a community resource center in Hernando County. We've also deployed generators uh, to support special needs sheltering operations. Uh, and of course, Starlink Internet, uh, all counties uh, have access to that, and we're deploying more as needed. More than 200 ambulances and more than 30 paratransits are in Central Florida footprint, ready to support first responder operations. And as I previously noted, we've ramped up our support of debris removal. That's a 24-7 round-the-clock mission. The state of Florida is amassing significant amount of fuel reserves ahead of Milton, and we're staging it to be utilized as needed. These quantities include 415,000 gallons of diesel, 389,000 gallons of gasoline, and an additional 1.5 million gallons of both diesel and gasoline are currently en route. I know there's different things that are being said, but all fuel continues to arrive at Florida ports. There has not been an interruption of that. I know people are going to fill up their gas tanks, which is a good thing. Uh, there's more lines than, than maybe th that we're used to on some of these, uh, but there has not been an interruption in fuel deliveries, uh, and all the ports um, are checked in on that. Local officials and their vendors must continue debris removal efforts for those areas that are in the eye, a potential path of this storm. My executive order requires debris, debris landfill and dump sites to remain open 24-7 to accept debris from Hurricane Helene. We need as much of this debris picked up as possible. Uh, this creates a, a safety hazard, and it also will increase the damage that Milton could do uh, with flying debris. Now, all local entities should comply with this order and work around the clock to accomplish this mission. We have uh, deployed major assets to help, but yet, you know, last night in Pinellas County, there were 300 vehicles. Some of them were state vehicles, but also a lot of private uh, pickup trucks and vehicles who were bringing debris. As they, that's helpful. They should be doing that, uh, and yet, uh, the one of the gates was locked. There was no one manning it. 
And so we had this massive line of cars waiting to drop off debris, which is which is a good thing. And so Florida Highway Patrol basically took matters into their own hands, uh, fastened some some rope to a couple pickup trucks to the gate and busted the gate open. And then those those uh, trucks were able to go in and, and unload the debris. We don't have time for bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, we have to get the job done. And the effort that Jared Perdue and Kevin's team have made in helping uh, get the debris off and supplementing the, the local efforts has been incredible. We have noticed uh, since the weekend in the order, you have seen some more vendors out there. I know city of St. Petersburg has been working hard to get the debris out, and that's a great thing. And they're working, I think, uh, well. Uh, but these debris sites need to be open, and we're going to ensure that to be able to do. So just in the last 24 hours, uh, the state has done almost 500 truckloads of debris, totaling 9,000 cubic yards. So that's just from the barrier islands in Pinellas County bringing to the debris landfills. Uh, we have over 200 state assets dump trucks, other types of trucks and vehicles to be able to do. But keeping it 24-7 is important. We absolutely encourage private citizens to have the debris and bring it in. That's helping the mission. Can't get bogged down in bureaucracy on this. The debris mission is going to continue uh, until it's no longer safe to do so. Clearly, we're going to be able to work all the way through today. Uh, and probably all the way through tomorrow, given that the storm's likely not to uh, make landfall till later on Wednesday, and that could even get pushed back even further. So we've made a big dent in this. Uh, I know folks on the ground locally in those barrier islands and places like Manatee and Pinellas have been working very hard, but, but let's get this done. Let's get as much of that debris removed as humanly possible, and let's work 24-7 to be able to do it. Uh, so we have right now, just in the debris mission, we have 800 National Guardsmen that are also deployed helping our state agencies. We currently have 5,000 Guardsmen that are mobilized for the response to this storm, and we have more than 3,000 additional Guardsmen who will be mobilized prior to landfall. The National Guard is also deploying heavy equipment to assist with debris removal, including Army and Air Force horizontal construction units, tactical high water vehicles, dump trucks, and front end loaders. Linemen and power re restoration uh, resources are being marshaled in advance of the storm. This is a storm, the path of the storm that would hit the western part of the Florida Peninsula, then go all the way across the peninsula and exit in the Atlantic Ocean, that's going to impact a lot of different utilities. Uh, we've spoken to, to, to most of them, and, and they're, they're working to get, to get people here. You know, if you look, uh, we had Helene, and there were 2.4 million restorations, but 99.9% .9 were back within a few days. You know, there's still hundreds of thousands of people without power in some of these other states that got hit by Helene. So there are crews working there, uh, but they're bringing people in from far and wide to be able to respond accordingly. This path of this storm, you know, we don't know exactly how it's going to go. I know they say the eye is going to go here or here. Uh, th th that can move when you're talking about 30, 40, 50 miles north or south will make a huge difference in terms of who gets the worst surge, uh, how much power is, is ended up uh, uh, taken out. Uh, and so we have no way of knowing how that's going to shake out. So the resources are being brought in and the power restoration effort will, will begin as soon as it's safe to do so. Again, I made this point yesterday, but all of our assets that we had lent to assist in North Carolina are here in the state of Florida. We have a temporary base camp at Tropicana Field to support uh, not just the debris operations, but any post-landfall first responding operations. So we have landfall is going to happen probably sometime later Wednesday, maybe early Thursday, and it could potentially speed up. And so maybe it'll be a little earlier than that. It could continue slowing. Maybe it'll be a little less, but, but there is going to be a landfall in the middle of this week. Uh, Monday morning where we are today, you have time to execute your plan, but you got to do it now. Uh, there are going to be, there have been some evacuations that have been issued. There's going to be a flurry of them today. I know the counties are working on uh, opening shelters. They typically will open the shelters after 
they have the evacuation go out, not before. Uh, so make sure that you're following the, the, the news coming out of your local county. Uh, but all these barrier islands, all these areas that would be susceptible to this storm surge that's up and down the, the west coast of Florida, you should assume that there's going to be some form of evacuations that are going to be issued by your local uh, county uh, officials. That, that, is, that is going to happen when you have the potential for storm surge of this magnitude. We also have a storm that's already very powerful. Now, the forecasts are that it's gonna peak before it reaches landfall and then weekend is still gonna be a strong storm. But you know, we don't know that that's necessarily gonna happen. Uh, and so this is something that's gonna be really, really significant one way or another. Uh, but you have time to be able uh, to do this today. And again, you don't have to evacuate uh, hundreds of miles. If you're in those barrier islands, if you're in areas that are susceptible to storm surge, you go to areas that are not susceptible to that. Every place, every county has places within them where you can go to. Uh, maybe it's a friend's house, maybe it's a hotel, uh, maybe it's a shelter. Uh, we have the ability to withstand wind in Florida with most of our buildings, and nothing would be designated as a shelter if it couldn't withstand that. Uh, so, so, so that's an option, especially if you're not comfortable getting on the road and traveling a great distance. You don't have to do that. And you're going to see shelters open in all these counties. Kevin is working on supplementing that uh, from the state uh, if there's a need to have more particularly in Central Florida, uh, so we'll do that. But you have an opportunity uh, today to, to, do, to do what you need to do to execute this plan. You have time today, uh, but do it. But time is going to start running out very, very soon. We are uh, effective at 1030 a.m. We are suspending all tolls in uh, west, uh, western part of, of Central Florida into Central Florida as well as Alligator Alley. You know, people sometimes will say, you know, where do you evacuate to? They just want to get out. They, they don't want to just stay local and they want to get out. Um, well, I think that uh, probably the easiest route would probably be to go to go north if you're in central Florida, because the way the storm looks, it looks like it's going to have more of an impact on se central and southern Florida. Uh, most of these places in Tallahassee and northern Florida likely aren't going to see as significant of impacts, uh, but, but be that as it may. Just understand that if they have a storm going into the greater Tampa Bay area now, it is possible that that could shift further south. So if you do evacuate south, you may be ending up going to where you're going to have a lot of the storm anyways. We saw that with Hurricane Ian, so just be mindful of that. But again, you don't have to. Uh, go hundreds of miles. That is not required. Uh, any place that's going to be open as a shelter, Florida hotels that that are that are built, you know, within the last however many 20, 30 years, are all going to be able uh, to withstand hurricane force winds. Sandbag locations are open in multiple counties in South and Central Florida. Check your county's EM page to find out where those locations are. You can find your county's emergency management page by going to floridadisaster.org backslash counties, floridadisaster.org backslash counties, and you have that local EM page that will tell you about any local evacuation orders that are made. But know your zone, know where you are. You know, the bad thing about having a storm right on top is we have these logistical challenges. The one thing people have with Helene, they know if they got a lot of storm surge with Helene, very well may get a, even more with this storm. Uh, so don't mess with the storm surge and do what you need to do to, to keep yourself and your family safe. Uh, we're going to be continuing to, to, to work around the clock here at the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, we, we're doing all the things that, that we would normally do, but then obviously we have this debris removal mission that we've, uh, uh, that we've dived into to be able to help these local communities that, that have all this. Uh, it's going well, but, but we, need, uh, we need to keep doing on that.